We are back on the GTR in today's video, guys. Sorry it's been two weeks since the last video, but just things got in the way. Vans kept breaking down and it was just a bit chaotic. But we are back on the GTR today, guys, and we are gonna get it into the workshop, start stripping off all the damage, and just see how much things are roughly gonna cost us. So in the last video you'd have seen, I rolled it off the back of the trailer and it came down with quite a bit of speed and ended up uh, hitting the tire that I put there and the, the back wheel kind of like bowed out a little bit, um, which is fine for going backwards, but when I'm gonna try and like push it into the workshop, this wheel is actually just gonna end up pointing out because obviously it's missing an arm. Um, I don't wanna try and risk driving it in because it's automatic, not like the Porsche where I could control it off the clutch and stick it in reverse if I need to stop. With this, it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult without any brakes, so ideally I wanna push it. Um, so I have ordered and just gone and collected uh, the adjustment arm, which will go just in this gap here, which will then straighten the wheel out and it also make it solid. So we should then be able to push it into the workshop a lot easier. So that is step numero uno. Can see how loose it is without that. But that's how loose it is without that, um, this bar on. So that's why it's crucial we try and get that fitted. So I need to go get another one. However, oh, it's a little bit loose still. That's fine. It's only a little bit loose because I haven't done the bolts, some of the bolts up. Um, empty roll bars just flapping around somewhere. Don't actually know where that goes yet. We'll wait till we get into the workshop. But that should have shored things up a bit and make it so it can be pushed into the workshop a lot easier. So that's good. I just need to find a, a nut to go on the end of that bolt and we are good to go. Quickly, just try and bang this wing out a little bit because it was hitting the tire. There you go, just so it doesn't rub. There we go. All right, let's roll this back over. And actually, before I go any further, I just thought I'd mention, there was a lot of comments about people really surprised that there was shoes drum brakes on a GTR. Now, there is a disc that has to go over here. The drum brake is just for the handbrake. So this cable here that you can see that was bent or, uh, all bent up, that is for the handbrake. And these shoes just act as a handbrake. And so inside, it's a bit hard to explain, but inside the disc, there is like essentially a built-in drum and that is what these grip to for the handbrake. Um, for normal braking, it is disc only, which is quite a hefty one, as you would imagine for a GTR. I just thought I'd mention that because there was a lot of comments about it. There we go, hopefully it should be a little bit more solid now. That's fine, it's just a little bit of lateral movement because I haven't done the bolts up properly. Oh, there we go. Cool, right, she is sitting a lot nicer, so now we can start it up and push her into the workshop. Let's get on the old battery again. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, it's still bloody heavy in with the engine running. I'm done. Now guys, how would you like to win this 2019 Audi RS3 with 525 horsepower for just £2.50? And yes, I'm sponsoring my own video today, Compete for Cars. We are raffling off this 2019 Audi RS3. This 480 brake Golf GTI went last week to the lucky winner, Kieran. 
And the M2 competition went as well to the lucky winner, George. And actually the M2 and the GTI, I'm gonna be personally delivering to them both tomorrow. So here it is, a 2019 Audi RS3, which has got a stage two package from MRC, which includes a gearbox remap as well. So it's a good spec as well. So it's got the black styling pack. It's got carbon wing mirrors. And it's got the comfort package as well. So it's got a Bang & Olsen sound system. It's got reversing camera and keyless entry and start as well. And it's also got the virtual cockpit display, 26,000 miles on the clock. So it's low mileage. So as I said, this is an MRC stage two and gearbox map two with Scorpion downpipes, forge intercooler and a hard pipe inlet turbo. Very fast as well, it's, it's, you can almost argue it's too fast because, but, uh, yes the key is in the vehicle, I just need new battery. And no, this one is HPI clear. It hasn't been crashed and it's come direct from a supplier. So guys, this is the biggest competition yet. £2.50, go and grab your tickets. The link is in the description. There's only gonna be 20,000 tickets available. We don't do these uh, instant wins because in my opinion, it just devalues the competition. So if I put loads of instant wins in, there'd be twice, maybe three times the amount of tickets, which means you've got three times less chance of winning. So the competition is just for the car, but we are gonna do runner-up prizes of a thousand pounds and 500 pounds as well, guys. So go grab your tickets. Link is in the description, Audi RS3. So I think we're gonna start by removing the bumper. I was gonna do the boot lid, but to be fair, that's moved out the way enough to not worry about it for the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna concentrate on removing the rear bumper. Um, never removed anything like this on a Jap car before. In fact, never, as I said in the last video, worked on a Jap car before. So I'm just gonna start pulling things apart and hoping for the best. So I might put it on a time-lapse, just otherwise I'm gonna be referring to how does this come off? How does this come off every five seconds? Um, I'm gonna start by these tie downs because I think that's a little plastic cover that just pops off and I don't know, see? I'm gonna have to look into it. So I'm gonna stick on a time-lapse and yeah, uh, let's get it off. So we'll start by removing all the boot trims and there's loads of these little tiny clips, about 20 of them. But once you've done that, the whole boot lining comes out pretty easy. And then by removing the bumper, we need to remove the screws for the lights because it's actually integrated into the bumper. I think there's about four or five and there's one hidden right around the back there. But once we remove all those, we can go ahead and remove the carbon shield from the bottom. Again, quite self-explanatory. Just remove all the bolts that you can see. And then there's just two hidden in the wheel arches. So now we'll whip off the old wheels. Just found the locking wheel key under the passenger footwell. See, that's what it would look like normally with the disc and obviously we're missing the caliper on the other side as well. Interesting story, no, it's not an interesting story at all. Interesting development on the offside rear caliper, which I will go through in a moment, but we're concentrating just to get on this bumper off. And I believe we've just got to pull the wheel arch liner forward and there's a couple of 10 mil bolts going up into the bumper that side. And then hopefully the whole thing should just pull straight off. Right, eight time lucky. All right, more cable ties. Does that come out? Does that come out? Yay! All right. Might leave the fuel cap on for now. But we have a fuel flap which is undamaged, so that's good. Now we're going to turn our attention on to removing this side skirt, which I don't think is going to be too difficult. I think there's probably just a couple of screws underneath and possibly this one on the end here. So 
So I've got it about as much stripped as I can get for the moment. I'm hopefully getting the windscreen people out to take that rear quarter out and the rear screen out tomorrow. But with the side skirt and the kick plate now off, it gives us a good kind of overview of the damage and how far back it actually goes. So the good thing about this from what I can see is there are quite a lot of joins, which means there's quite a lot of panels that we could potentially replace. Um, so if we can see up to here, look, the panel for the quarter panel, it joins here on the kick plate. You can see it's similar to the Porsche to be fair. Um, so that can be a point that we can cut into. And you can see obviously it spot welds all the way up to the top. And you can see there, look, and it's joined in again at the top there. Now luckily that is just a plastic cover that goes over the A pillar. So it's quite, it's under that. So it's, it's, it's easier to do basically. And if we come back, we can see there's that bit of daylight I was talking about through the seat there. Um, and obviously we can see there is a join, a factory join here which goes up to there and you can see where it's split from the impact and tore a hole there. That goes right down to the bottom. I'm not sure how it's looking underneath, but we can see there's just loads of joins around the wheel well. And to be fair, this bit, apart from it being crumpled here, looks mostly okay. However, I do, I no, I think this is all right. It's, it's hard to tell because there's so many different angles. It looks, that looks damaged but I don't think it is. I think that is how it's supposed to look. We obviously will inspect that further before we make those decisions, but all this inside tub here looks okay. So it's potentially just this bit here, which has been impacted. Um, and obviously here where it's been pushed in a bit as well. The subframe looks okay. You can see where it's just ripped, it kind of ripped it off the subframe joints instead of actually bending the subframe itself. Um, so that looks okay. The subframe at the back here looks fine, as does the rest of it. So as I said, the offside rear quarter hasn't been impacted that badly around where the fuel tank, um, well, nozzle is. It's, it's quite, it feels quite minor. And again, there's loads of different panel joins as well. So there's loads of places that we can um, join up this new panel, which I am gonna show you in a second. So yeah, it's not looking horrendous at the moment but obviously until we start stripping things back and we've removed this the the main bit of damage that panel here it gives us a better idea of where we're going to be at so let's just move over to this panel here and i don't know i think i revealed this in the last video so this is basically an offside rear quarter off an equivalent identical gtr even the same color and as you can see straight away look we have no damage and that is how it's supposed to look. Oh, actually, we better see if it's supposed to yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. So it's supposed to look like that then. So this is the part that I thought was damaged, but no, that's factory. Now, damage aside, I think I should explain a little bit more about the car that I've actually got and what it was like pre-crash and even how the crash happened. Now, luckily enough, the previous owner has reached out and got in contact with me and basically explained what's happened in the crash and also what kind of car that we've got here. Now, this is, a, as you know, it's a 2010, it's a 60 plate. And um, yeah, the, the previous owner it wasn't his fault uh, how the crash happened, which you could probably guess by the, the damage. Um, offside rear quarter damage is a bit odd for it to be your own fault unless you've wrapped it around a tree and spun out, which is, quite, I suppose, quite plausible. But no, the car was uh, going down in roadworks and uh, it was a two-lane motorway and lane two um, got shut off by cones. And as it was going, uh, merging into one lane, uh, a Passat decided to bomb it down the the, uh, the outside, not realise the cones were closing off the lane and basically just drove straight into the back of the GTR instead of driving into some cones instead. So that's pretty much how the crash happened. Um, and also the car itself is a very clean, very tidy car. The gearbox has been rebuilt by, I think it is at Volokov Motors, I think it is. I think the, there was a badge on the back there. So that's all been redone. It's just had five grand spent on discs and pads. Uh, annoyingly, we are gonna need still a disc and a set of pads for the rear anyway. Um, but yeah, the guy, the guy that owned it previously was saying that um, he bought this car from a dealership where they had like 10 other GTRs for sale. And he said that this is the one he bought because it drove the best and it was overall the nicest car. So really good to know that we've got a really nice car here. And it's also just had a stage one Litchfield and a Y pipe fitted as well. So it's got around 600 horsepower. So absolutely, the car is absolutely perfect. Couldn't have picked a better car to buy crashed. And I don't think these wheel arch um, dents are from Copart in the end. 
the previous owner sent me a picture of the car being four wheel lifted onto a recovery truck and I believe that is from the strap so that it's not coming out far enough from the wheel and it just basically pinching on the wheel arch that's I believe how that has actually happened also one of the annoying things is the whole hub that I was missing actually went off to Copart with the car but never made it to the auction so somewhere between it getting to Copart it's got lost and that's really frustrating because although the wheel was clearly knackered and buckled the tires gone the caliper would have been fine uh, the disc and pads would have probably been fine as well which would have saved me a good 1500 quid quite annoying so now looking on the inside of the chassis or the quarter panel of this is quite interesting just to see how we're going to try and make this work so um, it's the wheel well that's mainly damaged uh, this side been okay it is mainly this bit here which is the impact and uh, i believe it's this bit here which is creased and that's where we can see our daylight this is where the rear bench or you would sit as a rear passenger pretty sure that's an iso fix point um and then you've got yeah seat belt anchor somewhere as well um so yeah we need to i think you should you guys let me know in the comments as well where is the best place to try and join this in and cut this into um it's quite tricky to say you know i i I don't know if we're going to need this part or not. We might not. So it could be a case of cutting it out here along this seam, seam all the way along here, look, and welding that in. Um, I don't know if I need a bit of floor pan here. So again, do we then move down to this bottom section here and, and uh, cut that in? It's, there's quite a lot of variance at the moment. And um, just looking at it here, see this bit isn't damaged, but this part... Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. I think it might not be. The floor pan might not be of this bit. It just might be the, the outer bit here. It's, yeah, we're going to have to start because this bit is damaged, but only just here. I've just found some very upsetting hidden damage. And yeah, it looks like the subframe has just bent inwards. So I was just looking around and I noticed, look, here we can see a crease and it's perfectly in line with the impact here, look. And this tubular section here on the end has obviously just bent inwards ever so slightly. And yeah, you can see where it's just creased and creased up there a little bit as well. Yeah, it definitely shouldn't look like that. So it looks like it's probably bent round maybe a centimeter here. And that's very upsetting because that means we need a new subframe, which is about, well, I've only found one on eBay, 1800 quid. So. Yeah, that's quite upsetting, um, but nothing I can do about it. It's one of those things, isn't it? We've got, to, we've got to crack on. Now, something else that I found interesting, which I think is going to work, is obviously I need a caliper and a rear disc. I think the rear disc I'm probably going to have to buy new, but the caliper, that was the problem because um, these R35 calipers are an upgrade for R34s and R33s, maybe even R32 as well. So people don't sell calipers separately. They sell them as kits. And kits range from anything between three and sort of six thousand pounds for a kit, and no one will split them and sell me a caliper separately. Obviously, I only need an offside rear caliper. Um, but I did find one on eBay, but it was a near side rear caliper. But after speaking to a few of you guys, I worked out that the caliper should be identical and symmetrical, and the only difference I can find is that the feed pipe from um, one side of the piston to the other pistons this pipe that goes around the bottom here is flipped for the near side and the off side so uh, so we can see the near side rear caliper look the feed pipe is at the bottom so on the off on the off side it needs to be at the bottom as well but obviously if we put this caliper on the other side the, uh, the, the feed pipe would be at the top. But as I said, it's a symmetrical caliper so there's no reason why we can't just remove this feed pipe and put it here where the two bleed nipples are and then put the two bleed nipples where the feed pipe is and that will turn it basically into an offside rear caliper and that is what I'm going to do and that I've managed to pick up this caliper for 250 quid obviously saving me potentially 2750 quid at least by having to buy a load more doesn't help me with the discs and pads but that's a different issue so over to our whiteboard where we've still got the GT4 and the R32 in progress as well. So we'll stick the R35 in the middle. And yeah, I said in the last, in the first video that I paid over 25 grand for the car. Now I actually paid 28,000 pounds for it, which 
actually seems quite a lot of money, but they are just going up in value and have done for a while. So this is a really clean example. I mean, this car would have been about 46 to 48 grand um, if it hadn't been crashed. So therefore, 28, it's a bit strong, but hopefully the repair won't be too bad. Now the quarter panel, I paid 800 pound for, and the caliper I managed to get for 250 in the end. So we're at a grand budget for the moment. Now I haven't bought a bumper, disc pads and stuff like that yet. Um, but you look this and pads you're probably looking around about a grand probably and then also um, the bumper I think I can get a bumper and a side skirt for about four to five hundred pounds so there's another fifteen hundred pound there and after that it's just gonna be a case of obviously the welder to weld them in paint and no doubt a few other surprises on the way but it shouldn't be too far north of 30 grand fingers crossed so that is going to be it for today's video guys, we've kind of stripped it all down, assessed the damage and in the next video we can start stripping all the parts off and working out how we're going to integrate that new quarter panel. So it's going to mean fully removing the old subframe, I didn't actually realise in the GTR that the gearbox is on the rear axle, I didn't actually realise that at all. Um, but we can see look, it's had a complete re uh, rebuild only six or so months ago. So. so as always guys, I hope you did enjoy this video, please do let me know in the comments um, what you thought of the video and also what you think or how we should integrate the new quarter panel into the GTR. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. And don't forget guys, go and grab your tickets for the RS3, super low odds. And uh, yeah, one of you guys will get that for only £2.50. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.